So you're just gonna say, this is the same old importing my model into Lumion and hitting the render button, right? Well, yes and no, it is the same process, but I wanna talk about my specific process and some things I like to do when working in Lumion. So this is a two-part video. The challenge I have put myself is to create an exterior image of this house with Lumion and with V-Ray and Photoshop. Nowadays, many of us stopped using Photoshop and I just want to see the different results one can get from both types of processes. So in this video, we're going to see the results with Lumion and the, in the next video, we will see the result with V-Ray and Photoshop. So let's start. This is a house designed by a Colombian architect in the 60s and right now I am in the process of studying it for my master's thesis along with many other houses. So since I have modeled many houses, I want to make some videos with it and see what good things can come from this. The architect's name is Fernando Martinez and this is more or less how the house looks like in some of its floor plans. It was a house designed for a family of librarians, so the majority of its organization is around a library and furniture for books and frames. From the pictures, you can see there are many plans outside and the white stucco on the exterior wall gives it a rich texture. So I thought of doing an exterior image from the main garden where one could see one of the facades and the little book details in contrast with a sunny day. First, I looked up some references of houses with forest backgrounds or a house from afar. This is a process I usually do for many of my visual projects. It just helps me get some ideas of what I can achieve in terms of composition and storytelling. Next, I opened my SketchUp model and printed out a line drawing which I could sketch over what I wanted to achieve. It's not something very detailed. I'm just pointing out where I want the main vegetation to frame the house and where I want the small details and material annotations so I don't forget. After this, I open Lumion with the Lumion LiveSync plugin. I start to apply materials and modify anything in SketchUp as it can get instantly updated in my Lumion view. Parallel to doing this, I also start setting up a view in Lumion. I grab one of the templates that Lumion 10 comes with, the realistic template. This is usually a good template and you just need to modify small details, but overall it has very good results. I started with the idea of a sunset image where the library was the only room with the lights turned on and the sky was kind of dark, but after this I changed it to a sunny day. One important tip when creating a detailed model in Lumion is investing some time looking for some good 3D models from the Lumion library and also from the SketchUp warehouse. Some 3D models that are in Lumion you won't need to have in your actual 3D SketchUp model. But there are many things Lumion doesn't have at the moment like curtains, variety of plants. So there are, so for these things I went back to the SketchUp warehouse and imported it into my 3D model. For the rest of the things, I used the Lumion library. Now about 50% of this image is in vegetation, so I also dedicated much of my time to that process. Since I wanted a variety of grass, I applied different materials in SketchUp to many surfaces of my grass, and when in Lumion, I applied different types of 3D grass. I played with the settings a bit in each one so it wouldn't look so generic and could be varied. I also added some random flowers and some twigs that were from the Lumion library. These things may seem somewhat insignificant, but the details are the ones that make the image. Of course, you have to be very practical with this and not import details to all the 3D model if you are not going to render it. In this case, I knew I was only going for an exterior render with a view of some interior spaces but not in a big scale, so I didn't spend time importing models. To the other rooms or adjusting details in other places that weren't going to be in the point of view of the camera. Another tip is to age your materials. Lumion has some great options to modify your materials and add weathering to them. Sometimes materials look very crisp and perfect very far from real life. In reality many walls have rain stains or ragged around the edges and not very white in reality. So for a bit more realism, what you can do is toggle the weathering options in each material so you can have many more imperfections. The good thing about Lumion is that you can test out very quickly elements that you want in your composition and frame. So for example, I wanted the sun to light up the facade and project the shadows of the trees. But at the same time, I didn't want too much sun or bright spots in the foreground 
of my image so I had to add some plants behind the camera so some spots in the foreground would be dark. And the facade was the main attention grabber. Finally, I rendered out the image. When you are working in Lumion, normally it would do all the work and leave very little to post-production. In this case, I just wanted to make some minor adjustments to the colors and make it much more grainy also. I imported it into Photoshop and added a color lookup adjustment layer. Left it at 50% opacity so I wouldn't crunch all the details and main colors. And finally, I merged all the images together and added a noise filter so it could have a more of a photographic look. Again, these are very small details that don't take up much time but in the end make the image look a bit more interesting and maybe gives it a more original look. After this, you would think the process is done, right? Yes, but no, we still have a, some things to do. First, we have to check if the image works and looks good. For this, I export it and send it to my phone and tablet. There I can see from another point of view and maybe notice some errors that I didn't see in the other screens. Also, if I have some time, I print it out in a very small scale in a white sheet of paper. I like to think of this as when photographers check the negatives before revealing them. There they can see tiny details that aren't as visible in the big picture. So as you can see, just because Lumion can do all the work doesn't mean that you won't have a thought out process and room for improvement. These small steps, small details, small increments make all the difference. Now my question after making this is, can I make a better image with my Photoshop and beginner V-Ray skills? This is what we're going to see in our next video. Some final announcements, if you are somehow interested in fiddling around with the Lumion 10 file of this video and the Photoshop file, then go to my Patreon page, you can find that along with all my other files and long form videos and support the channel. Also if you are interested in seeing different kinds of content, go over to my Instagram page for short but interesting tutorials, quotes and behind the scenes content. So what do you think, do you prefer Lumion or do you prefer Photoshop?